Hi YouTube. Um, when I painted this seahorse, I took photos of it um, at different stages throughout the process of painting it. Um, so I'm going to show you step by step and explain what I did at each stage. Okay, so this is stage one. This just establishes the very basic pencil outline. Um, keep your pencil lines very pale when you're doing this to start with. Don't press too hard until you've got everything exactly where you want it. This next stage um, shows all the sort of ridges down the seahorse's body. Um, you can draw them in as single lines to start with. Once they're positioned and you've got all the gaps in the right place, then you can double the lines up. Um, and at that point, you would then darken some of the lines. Now, don't feel you have to darken every line. Um, what I tend to do is imagine the light hitting the seahorse from above, um, and maybe from one side as well, but from above mainly. And then you just darken the lines underneath the ridges where your main shadows are going to be going. Okay, this next image shows a seahorse with the uh, um, pencil shading all done. Um, so what you'll notice with this is each kind of uh, ridge, horizontal ridge down the seahorse, um, because it juts out, it's quite dark underneath each ridge. And then you sort of shade under there and blend away from those edges and try and get some of the other kind of ridges and things in as you go. Um, I do this technique on any of my kind of more detailed uh, kind of especially natural history uh, illustrations before I apply the watercolour. It's just really nice to have it all done in pencil first. It really kind of strengthens the um, the tones and everything. And also it's much easier to blend with a pencil, I find, than it is with watercolour. Um, you'll probably find the same thing. And it's all just practice, just trying to get the different tones. I use a 2H pencil for this just because it's finer. Uh, and less smudgy. Uh, if I use an HB, I tend to rub my hand all over and it tends to smudge all over the place. So I definitely recommend using a 2H. Uh, and I use a mechanical pencil as well. Okay, the first wash that I did on this is just yellow ochre. Um, and if you add lots of water to your yellow ochre, obviously when you apply it as a pale wash, uh, you see the white of the paper coming through and it makes it this uh, more like a sort of cream colour. Um, you've got to keep this wash quite light because obviously uh, this is going to be where the sort of the main highlight areas are going to be as you darken everything else. Okay, the next colour you're going to use is raw sienna. Um, and this is another sort of yellowy brown colour, but it's just slightly more um, orangey, maybe a bit stronger. And you can see if you look at this image carefully, um, it goes sort of along the bottom of the ridges um, and into um, sort of underneath places really uh, just to make the contrast a bit stronger okay and the next color you're going to use is English red um, English red is quite strong um, it's like a sort of a brick red color um, what you need to do is um, water it down quite a lot um, because you're just again adding quite subtle washes with this so anywhere on this image where you see a slight um, reddish tinge um, start applying it to those areas. Okay, the next colour that I use is um, a mix of violet with English red. Um, be careful, obviously, with violet because it's such a strong colour. The English red um, neutralises it quite a bit. Um, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll, you'll know that I use this mix quite a lot. Violet and English red. Again, I, quite a lot of water added to it. It's just a pale wash. Um, so if you study this um, this particular image, it's just going uh, in all the places where it looks slightly purpley. Okay, this is where the contrast gets a lot stronger. Um, so what you're using here is sepia, and this is really thick, so lots of pigment, um, hardly any water. And you could switch to a smaller brush at this stage if you wanted, um, maybe a brush that's a size 2, something like that. And if you get into all the little corners, um, you can see there are sort of lines here and there and little tiny corners. It's all the very, very dark bits. Um, and when you apply it, you could um, just slightly blend the edges so they're slightly soft um, rather than having hard, stark edges. That makes quite a difference. OK, this stage might not look 
that different from the last stage at first glance but um maybe you know jump back and then look at this one again a couple of times and you'll see that it's quite a bit more yellow um so what i've done is i've mixed cadmium yellow medium um, and again it's just a watery wash of it and you just go in and apply it um, here and there it's mainly to quite a lot of these sort of higher um, places where you know almost where the light hits it but not quite you see what I mean just next to where the light might hit it and it just yeah makes the whole thing just look slightly yellower overall okay for the final stages on this um, I just went back to my um, violet and English red mix um, and this just makes the whole thing look a lot more purple um, so when you're applying this be careful because you want to leave a lot of the ridges looking quite yellowy so the purple almost goes kind of in between all the ridges uh, some of the ridges do have a bit of purple on but mainly you're trying to leave those ridges um, paler and more yellowy looking um, this makes the whole thing look a lot more solid and a lot more kind of realistic overall um, and very you know right at the very end what you could do is take a bit of white acrylic um, I normally use acrylic instead of white watercolour because it's stronger um, and I just put little highlights here and there with the white acrylic and that can make quite a big difference as well okay um, I hope you've enjoyed this video um, and I hope you have a go at it and if you like this kind of thing and you want to see more step by step um, kind of paintings that I've done if you check out other videos that I've posted um, or hit subscribe because I'll be posting more in the future um, I've also got a couple of videos of my kind of more detailed paintings um, portfolios so if you have a look at those thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video